so much for joining us. Um, my friend and colleague, Christine Higgins and myself, we're gonna be talking today about how to bring joy into the holidays. I'm a local marriage and family therapist. And in fact, my office is across the street from the studio here. And this time of year, I see so many people who are having a multitude of uh, difficulties, family difficulties, um, things happening within themselves, um, things that happened in the past. So we want to help people to see that it doesn't have to be difficult, that you can um, inject joy into the season. And so I want to introduce Christine Higgins, who uh, came all the way from the Boston area. So she uh, drove, I think, like two hours today. So if you could say something, why would you do that? Drive all the way to West Hartford from, from such a distance to talk today with me. Sure. Um, well, one thing that Lori didn't mention is that she is not just your standard therapist. <laughs> she teaches an understanding of the mind that not many people know about. And it's incredibly impactful the changes that we see from people and how they're able to go about their lives so much more easily. And when I learned this four years ago, I was so impacted that I really, really wanted to help other people learn it too. And I started Three Principles New England. And that's how Lori and I met through that, my time there. And so when she brought up this subject and bringing joy to the holidays, I thought that that was absolutely perfect. And that's why I decided to drive two hours to come be here today, because it's an opportunity to share what we know with people and to hopefully bring some more joy to this time of year, which we have ideas about. It's supposed to like look really joyful and pleasant and uh, parties and such, but often there's so much underlying stress and disappointment and anxiety and things that come with it. So we'll do our best to share with you what we know. Yeah, thanks so much, Christine, for coming all the way out. Um, we, the two of us recently did a seminar a few months ago on uh, relationships. So that's what happens during the holiday season. People have a lot of expectations of um, not only themselves, but their family members. And the, what Christine was referring to about this understanding how our mind works, how everyone's mind works, mm -hmm. it's the same across the board no matter who you are, is so helpful because when you start realizing that your experiences moment to moment all the time throughout your life are happening from within yourself from your own take on what's going out there from your own thinking about what is taking place in front of you that changes literally everything because we are so used to going through life as though whatever is out there, everybody is seeing it the same way. And that's just not the case. So that's why you can be at a holiday party and after the party, the person you're with, you're driving home and the person starts complaining about things and you're thinking, well, what party was that person at, you know? <laughs> um, I had a whole different experience. It's true when people go to the movies, when people go to see a play, they come away and they have a very different experience. So that's because of what's taking place within us. And when you know that, you can realize that we don't have to buy into anything we think there's always another slant on it. So what I've learned, and, and you know, even though Christine and I teach this, we're always students of what has usually been called the three principles, 
which explains mind, thought, and consciousness that work together in giving us our experience of reality. There is no one reality. It's always a personal reality. So what do you, what do you want to add to that <laughs> intro so far, Christine? I think the piece about understanding that everyone's having their own experience in every moment is really helpful. In fact, we have some other friends with us today that you can't see there off camera, and they came to be with us um, to, to hear what we had to say, but also to um, ask questions and help us along here. Um, and before the, we started today, I was having a lovely conversation with someone about holiday traditions. And we were talking specifically about, you know, your experience as a child versus your experience as an adult and how so many holiday traditions, um, you know, as adults, we have ideas of what would be fun or what looks interesting. And as a child, your experience is completely different. Like that four hour dinner where you have to sit <laughs> in your really uncomfortable clothes and obey all the rules and, you know, talk to great grandma and great grandpa who are just strange and you're like, <laughs> you'd rather be off playing in your room. You know, so that's just one example of a really dramatic difference and a way that, that it's easy to see that you know a child and an adult are going to be experiencing this event differently but the truth is even two adults sitting next to each other even two children sitting next to each other they're all going to have a different experience even though they're at the same event the same as you said the same party the same movie the same a lot of people go to church services at this time of year um, and and it's interesting because as soon as you see that people are having their own experience, it's much easier to get curious about the other person's experience instead of just thinking they're wrong. Right, right. I love that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, have you ever gone to a movie and you thought it was awesome and the, other, the person you were with was not impressed yeah. and then you try to convince them that they're wrong. <laughs> no, no, it was good. <laughs> I promise you, it was really great. <laughs> yeah, that's such an yeah. important point, Christine. You know, I'm glad you brought that up. There's, it, we could spend a week here bringing up different points for you, but you know, the, the bottom line is that we experience how we think about things. And the way we think about things there is not the only way. Yeah. So a lot of times, if, if I'm not having the best feeling, I'll just um, clear my mind and listen and get curious. I love that word that you used, getting curious about what's going on and how other people are seeing things. It, it gets you out of your own head and it gets you listening to the other people you're with. And that is, is really a very calming experience to just yeah. be a listener. You know, there, during this time of year, there's just a lot of um, fuss going on and people feeling really frazzled that they have a to-do list a mile long and they have so many expectations of making it better than last year or as good as last year or as good as um, the in-laws had it the previous year. There's just so much judgment that we do and we don't realize it because we think it's coming from life that we're just judging what's out there. But when you step back and you realize, no, the judgment is coming from us from our own thinking. We're conscious of everything we think. It's one of the three principles is consciousness. We're conscious of whatever we think. So that's what our experience is. Yeah. And it, it turns things around on a dime. It really does. 
Have you had that, Christine, where you, you're not having a great time and then all of a sudden you realize, oh, I'm really doing this to myself. And then it, it switches. It does. And, that, and what I love about the switch, about when it changes, is that you don't actually have to do anything. So for a very, very long time, I was stuck in this kind of model of positive thinking. So if I might have, you know, this thought like, oh, this party's terrible, this person I'm talking to is boring, this is whatever. <laughs> and, and so then I would try to have a better thought. Oh, that's not a good thought. I shouldn't be thinking that about that person. Okay, well, what if they really, you know, are interesting and I am, <laughs> just, you know, <laughs> I get very busy trying to think about other ways to spin my thinking. And what's lovely about what we know now is that you don't have to do anything with it, just simply being aware, like, oh, I am not experiencing this person. I am only in this moment experiencing whatever thoughts are coming through my head. I don't have any control over the thoughts that are coming through my head. They're just coming, and I can pay attention or not pay attention to them, but I don't have to do anything. I don't have to flip them around, analyze them, think about them more, thinking about thinking, yeah. Yeah. It's and a that great is point. really a much more lovely space to be in. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. It reminds me of the the days when positive thinking was um, you know, sort of a fad. You know, we, we thought that if we changed what we were thinking that would change our experience, but mm -hmm. it doesn't. You know, that's just trickery. But like you say, if you realize you're caught up in your own drama, in your own world, that's all you need. That's all you need. And then you come back to the moment, whatever's going on in the moment. You know, as um, what came to me as you were talking about that, there is a movie called National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. Oh, I have Do you know that, that one? No. Okay, it's got <laughs> Chevy Chase in it, and he has like this really huge plan for this perfect family Christmas. It is going to be everything out of the storybooks. He's gonna have the perfect tree, the perfect dinner, the perfect gifts. I mean, it, it is, he has this idea in his head of how this is gonna go. It's funny. And he has such an idea in his head that he's not even paying attention to what's actually happening with the people around him. <laughs> like, they're out to pick their Christmas tree, and he fa finds this tree, and of course in the movie there's like glowing light coming out of the tree. It's the perfect tree. It's about three times the size of his house. There's like, <laughs> <laughs> and, and he's like, isn't it lovely to his family? And, and his daughter's standing there and her eyes are frozen shut and she's like shivering. And, and his son's like, oh my gosh, dad, do we have to be here? And, and he is so tuned out to what's happening around him because he's so trapped in creating this experience. You know, he wants to create this experience for his family members, but he he's so trapped in what he thinks it should be <laughs> that he can't even see what's going on. And, and the whole movie continues on like that. I mean, it's perfect. And it speaks to expectations mm -hmm. around the holidays where we have this ideal built up in our mind of what the perfect holiday looks like or you know sometimes we have bad expectations oh not this again i have to hang out with these family members oh i you know so we walk into the situation thinking we know how it's going to go having really strong expectations um, and then we miss out on everything that's on the connection right because really for holidays, don't we really want to just connect with the people we love? That's what, really? it's, that's what it is about, right? <laughs> and, we, and we lose sight of that easily, you know. Yeah. It's so easy when you get caught up in um, how things ought to be. Um, you know, really, I, I think about Christmas and Hanukkah and whatever you're celebrating, I think of this time of year as a moment to spend time in, in quiet and, and 
you know, going within, having some re time for reflection too, rather than getting all caught up in getting the perfect tree and doing the lampoon Christmas. Um, it, because then you see, you, if you get quiet, you'll see more what's around you. You'll see that your child is too cold and, and needs some attention. And yeah. you want to hear what we're saying for anybody listening to this, that we're talking about innocence in, in human beings. Like people don't realize when they're getting caught up in their own thinking. They don't realize yeah. that. So it's not like it's a bad father on that no. movie set letting the, the child freeze or in real life. It's not like people set out to um, inconvenience family members or, or um, you know, have them feel bad about anything. It's just what happens because we're, we're humans. And so, you know, that's why we wanted to talk a, a little bit about this for you because um, just because we want to get you to, to start seeing that there's a world within you that seems like it's all out there and it seems as though we're just taping what's out there with our little camera, internal camera or internal voice recorder. But all of that is going through kind of filters in our mind. It's, it's our own mind that's giving us our experience. And you know, <clears throat> it works wonders for relationships because people realize they can't blame each other anymore. Mm -hmm. You can't blame somebody for looking at you cross-eyed <laughs> or saying something that you think they shouldn't have said because it's your experience of what they said. Right. Yeah, it's, it, it, you know, it's just so great for, I'm sure, you know, I know you have this experience too in the work that you do and um, your children, with your children, that you can see, we, we have the privilege of, of watching people right before our eyes get over get beyond, get past, like they, they may start an argument, they may start a disagreement and get angry with one another. But the minute that they see that that anger is coming from their own, their own take on things, their own thinking about how it's going, they, it's not like, you know, they take responsibility for it. That sounds cliche. But you can't help but take responsibility for your own experience when you realize it's coming from you. It's just second nature then. It's, it's ob it becomes obvious then. Yeah. And it's also, earlier you talked about innocence. And that's important because even if you realize that your experience is coming from within you, um, Taking responsibility for it sounds a little bit like, like you created your experience. But, you know, I know you don't and I don't, I don't decide like, oh, I'm going to have a really bad experience right. about traffic today. <laughs> like, well, I'm going to hurt somebody great. today. Yeah. Who can I the, give the a bad time for? The experience comes up and it's just we don't have to be afraid of it anymore because we know it will also pass. It comes up, you experience it, and then it goes away. So unless you choose to, you don't have to hold on to the, that person's annoying, boring, this, you know, I'm stressed, whatever it is that comes up um, when we have so much more going on during this time of year. Um, and also, another thing you mentioned uh, with children, and it's interesting because for me, after having kids, a lot of this holiday season was about creating a good experience for them, wanting them to have all the bells and whistles and wanting them to have these really lovely memories. And you know, I, I was becoming the guy in the movie. Okay, let's have like four advent calendars and cookies and ice cream every day. And then we'll go out Christmas caroling and then we'll do that. I mean, it was, it was exhausting. And at some point, 
um, it became very clear that not only was there the disconnect, you know, not really like, you know, the kids are tired. It's like, no, 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 you can't be tired. We're going out looking at Christmas lights. Sorry. (laughs) You don't have a choice. You have to, you have to get on the program here. But also that I couldn't control their experience. You know, I wanted them to be happy. And so I worked really hard to make them happy. And once you realize that where that your experience is coming through your thinking in every moment and only in that moment and that's really the only place it can ever come from you realize that you can't control anyone else's experience either there's no chance of that so of course i still buy them gifts and make them cookies and try to do nice things but i'm far less attached to the outcome if i get them a lovely gift and they don't like it (laughs) then okay, I tried, and they're going to experience that gift however they experience it, and it's not on me, and it's not on them. They don't have to try to have an experience to please me, because kids will do that. Like, oh, I know that that was important to mom or dad or whoever, and so, you know, they'll try to hide their disappointment or to be something other than they are in that moment. Um because they know that we have expectations about how we want them to behave or to experience things. So I think um, in Buddhism, they talk a lot about not being attached to outcome. And I used to think that was a doing, like I have to like try to not be attached. However, once you really, really understand, um, one, that you have absolutely no control over what comes up for yourself or in life, Um, then attachment, you don't have to try for it anymore. It would kind of be like as if I walk outside. So, you know, I come outside and let's say it's cloudy and the weather report said it was going to be sunny. Um, I might be disappointed. I mean, it might be like, oh, darn it, that wasn't the outcome I was looking for. I really was hoping for sun today. But I'm not going to spend a lot of time attached to the weather. You know, I'm not going to spend a lot of emotional time about it being cloudy instead of sunny because I know I have absolutely no control whether it's cloudy or sunny. And so it becomes like that with experience. You don't have to try to not be attached to outcome because you just know whatever outcome experience comes, you don't have any control over it. And so then you can just let go and not be attached. And with that comes an ease. And you can kind of take things as they come and maneuver much more gracefully than being attached to people and things going the way that you are hoping or want. Yeah. Yeah, being in the flow of life, really, is being what you're flow. speaking to. There is a yeah. flow. And I'm wondering if um, anybody who's with us has any questions that you'd like to ask. So for me, uh, quickly, just even last year during this time, someone could look at my life at that point and say, that I had more things going for me, right? I had a girlfriend at that time, I had some, some family members that were around. A year later, I am in way much better of a spot with how I look at the holidays, right? So someone may actually look and be like, how is he so happy with what he's lost? Or, And that comes from the three principles. With my students who I work with, how can without giving them this huge course on the three principles at first, I'm having a lot of students who have already noticed and today was a tougher day. How can we start to talk to them about these things with the holidays without getting full in depth because we might not always have the time to do so? What would you speak to our kids about? Yeah, that's a great question. Yeah. That is a great question. So, Well, I was just going to start out by saying, you know, what Christine was talking about, that being part of the flow of life, that, and not being afraid to feel whatever feeling comes up, that we're human. We want to feel the full 
array, and loss is a feeling, and, and there's nothing wrong with that. The, the difference is not being attached to it and not having to stay there for um, a long extended period of time that you can feel loss and you know sadness and then something else comes along and you're in another feeling state you, you get kind of carried through life so you know as a teacher just being with your students and compassionate you feeling compassion and knowing what they're going through that is going to be you know wonderful for them because again it's about connection it's all about connection and that makes sense because something happened this morning with me that would have taken days before and took minutes today yeah. because i just understood i just understood that where it was coming from it would pass when it did, and it does faster. It does usually quicker than I would think it does. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. And kids will notice that too, if you just point out. You know, one minute they'll be upset, the next minute they're not upset, and even just pointing that out to them. Oh, look, you were so upset two minutes ago, and now you're not. They it, get that. And it goes to your stuff with my nephew getting all the, you know, all these presents, and then ends up playing with a water bottle that had rice in it. <laughs> so you can't that create, you can't right. get that experience. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Well, we just have a short time more, but it's since you brought up, you know, about um, what you've learned and how that's helped you, I, I would just like to say that if anybody who lives locally and wants to learn more about what we've been talking about, we hold a gathering in a conference room right across from my office at 81 South Main Street in West Hartford. And you can get in touch with me, and I'll let you know when our next uh, gathering is. We, we meet Wednesday nights at 6 p.m., alternating Wednesdays. And uh, so my number is 860-561-1919. And I know, I'd like you to say something about okay. the organization that you started, Christine. And you can also find resources and other events at the number 3, P is in Paul, so it's 3pnewengland.org, and there are resources and other activities happening there, and you can sign up for the newsletter and stay up to date. Yeah, thank you yeah. so much for, for coming down to do this. Really, really appreciate you. You know, you're in the car for four hours <laughs> in total for uh, half an hour on uh, here with us, and thank you for coming to be in the audience with us and we're going to go have a little holiday party all of us now. <laughs>